Welcome to our webinar on Getting Ahead by Getting a Coach. I'm Misa Chutakarsam and your main presenters today are Melanie Symes and Simon North. Melanie is a highly experienced coach, guide and mentor with an extremely strong background in HR. She's been at the very top of leading businesses and brands like Burger King, Disney, Jacques Fair and Starbucks and will be sharing her experiences and insights into how to get ahead and become successful by getting a coach today. Simon North, founder of Position Ignition, lead guide and career and workplace expert, will be presenting alongside Melanie and sharing his experience and expertise with us as well. We've put this session together to highlight how coaching can play a key role in one's career and how it can help you to achieve your goals. So I think we are ready to make a start. So welcome, Melanie and Simon. Thank you, Nisa, and hello, everybody. We're delighted to um, talk to you about this subject of getting ahead by getting a coach. And we want to start with looking at this question, what is it? Coaching is still relatively new in business. Of course, we know it from probably mostly sport from our childhoods, but coaching is probably not even a generation old yet. And what Mel and I want to do today is to help demystify this subject with you. And in the doing of that, we will talk about our own experiences of it. Both of us have been in business a long time. Both of us have HR backgrounds. Both of us have been through coaching. We have qualified as coaches, and it is part of our DNA. And we want to share that with you so that you understand just how personal this process is, how supportive it can be for us, and how developmental it can be as well. I'm going to just speak to you uh, for a moment about my own experience as a case study. As I said, it's part of our DNA and it is definitely now a habit, a habit where I know that I've got an opportunity on a regular basis to work on my future. That is my future professionally, but also my future on a wider basis as well and I deal with those things which are most important to me at the time where I know I'm going to, as I say here, do my most penetrative thinking. Now, how did I get into this? Well, about 13 years ago, I was in an executive position um, sitting on a board of directors, soon to become, as it turned out, a managing director, and my coach was significant in that process, and later, as I said, I trained as one, and I use coaching as a way of, as Stephen Covey says, sharpening the saw. It's a skill that I utilize all the time because I know how important it is in the work that I do every day of my professional life. I am always in a coaching circle, which means that I always look forward, never more than a couple of weeks out, to having the opportunity to be coached as well as do the coaching that I do for a living. And what happens when I go into that space is I deal with what is going on for me now. What is right at the front of my head? What are the things which maybe I'm not as clear as I could be about? Is there something specific, a specific issue that I want to talk about with my coach? So it can be small, it can be big. It needs to be specific for me in order that I can get the most out of it. Now, what we're going to talk about is different facets of coaching and how you can look at coaching from different ways. And we will use other case studies and other people that come to our mind along the way. But I'm going to hand over to Mel now. So, hi, Mel. Hi, Simon. What I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is I'm sure many of you out there are on this webinar because you have some concerns about what coaching actually is. It's a one-to-one -one conversation you're going to have with somebody and it's very often misunderstood. It's not therapy or counselling which are much older helping professions. It's much more about thinking about yourself and having a conversation with yourself about yourself. The concerns you might have are that somebody's going to do something to you against your will. But actually, you need to be reassured that it will be your agenda. You're the one who decides what it is you want to talk about and when and how you want to introduce topics into the conversation. You might have concerns about where it all might lead and that you might get to uncomfortable places in the conversation. 
sometimes you can only begin to learn things about yourself when you actually sit down and have a conversation with somebody. And so if at any point it gets uncomfortable, you can stop the conversation. But very often we learn from these places. The coach doesn't have the answers and very often people arrive at coaching thinking that the coach is an expert and as we'll go on to explain a little later, there are different sorts of coaching and some coaches do have the answer but they sit more in a mentoring hat. The coach helps you find your own answers and what they do is they have techniques and processes so that you can start to think about your own experiences and find your own answers. And if you're not sure what you want to talk about, the coach can help you actually explore what that's about. You might have something that keeps happening. You might have a niggle. You might be curious following something that's happened after a training program or an experience, and you want somebody to talk to about this and find out a little bit more. So let's have a look at what coaching's about. It's about the future. And this is different from some of the helping professions. Coaching is very much about tomorrow. You don't have to have a problem to come to coaching. You can be curious. You might want to learn. You might want to manage yourself better and your feelings and emotions better. You don't need permission. It's your agenda. No one else can send you. You're in the driving seat. And to get most out of it, you need to be curious and want to learn. You can choose to do it or not. At any point, you can start and stop. There's total flexibility within the process. And it's a safe and structured place to talk. It's time out for you. It can feel a bit self-indulgent, but it's this learning and awareness that will prove invaluable. And it does have a purpose and goals, but they're your goals and your purpose. And it's about improving what you know about yourself and making yourself more resourceful. So what can it teach you? It can help you explore what's going on for you. So many times you can't identify what's going on. And so by talking it through, you start to notice patterns. It can help you understand more about how you work. It can make connections. And the coach listening can actually start to point out to you where this might have happened before or, or words she's hearing you say that will give you some insight into what's happening. Some of you may have been on training programs where you've learned that you were introvert or extrovert, that you were a blue or a red manager, or you wore a black or a green hat. But how often does this information become a label or something to hide behind? What the coach can do is help you understand what this all means and how to use this information in your interactions with others. It brings issues to the surface that enable you to think them through in a safe environment. There's nobody to judge you and it's confidential and they're important factors because so often at work and even sometimes at home, it's difficult to explore things when you think somebody might be judging you or going to then do your performance appraisal at the end of the year. You don't sometimes know how to express things. It stretches your thinking and it pushes you. So it's not always comfortable, but it is safe. And as we said earlier, you can stop whenever you like. So what else can coaching surface? It can help to talk through, find links and connections. How often do things happen and we really don't know why it's happened and we might want new ways to help us manage these things. It can give you space to express your feelings about issues. We talked about the safeness and the confidentiality of it being non-judgmental. And sometimes when you put words and hear the problem, it changes the perspective on it. It helps you realize that you have the answer but didn't know how to find it. Oftentimes the answer is in you, but for whatever reason you can't see it or you don't trust it. And it can help you think through alternative ways to act. If you know about you and you build up a repertoire of different ways to approach and get round the way you act, you can become more resourceful. Simon, over to you. Coaching can surface things and they can be little and relatively inconsequential and sometimes they can be really significant and everything in between. And we wanted to just give you an example of some quite significant things which are life-changing experiences for many of us and how 
coaching can really help us in this mode. Just as Mel has been describing, if you can imagine one of these things happening to you or to us at some point in your life, that life-changing moment, the one thing that you really want to do is to be able to get through it, get past it, move on, think clearly, and be more action-oriented at a time when actually finding your direction is really not that easy. Listening to adults whose children have left and gone away, maybe to college or away to a different part of the world, and that whole business of the empty nester is partly it's about, oh, well, where's my focus now? I'm no longer parenting. But actually, it's often to do with now there isn't that relationship so close. I've got to get on with other things. What do I do with myself? What do I do with my time? What do I do in my relationship with my partner or my spouse? Those are pretty fundamental things which coaching can help you with in the way that you were hearing Mel describe a moment ago. Similarly, with the death of a significant person in your life, it's a very similar sort of issue as the empty nester syndrome. Now, energy levels when it comes to coaching for you as you're being coached are really quite significant. And one of the things we'll talk about later, I'm sure, in terms of the type of benefit you get from coaching, the return on your investment, if you like, is that you can see a shift in your own energy. Now, it's possible that your energy levels are really high and you have a real desire to move on, a thrust, a drive to move on, but it, again, it's about being clear and having direction. Maybe your energies are really low for the aforementioned reasons, or indeed, you're beginning to struggle with coping because of failing faculties, of failing health, whatever it may be. When, as a friend of mine was talking to me the other day, talked about how they had sold a business that they were no longer enjoying and how terrific it was that they had managed to get that millstone from around their neck away, what it had left them with was a freedom that itself caused anxiety because they weren't sure what to do with their time. So these are some of the examples of how big, significant moments in life can help you. And as Mel was saying earlier on, this is a very different experience than what is sometimes called sheep dipping when it comes to the type of learning, teaching process that goes on in schools and in universities and indeed in businesses, that everybody has to go through it and you tick a box and say, well, we've done. Actually, this is completely at the opposite end of that spectrum of sophistication when it comes to learning because this, as you're hearing, is tailored absolutely to your needs. How so? Because you determine what it is that you bring to your coaching session. At this time, in this moment, it is deeply personal to what your needs are now. And here's the complication, because it is very easy for us as human beings to get in our own way. We know that we are complex. We know we are also completely unique. And if you haven't come across this chap, Tim Galway, the bottom bullet there, and his work, it is well worth investigating, even if you just do a Wikipedia rather than read his books. Tim Galway was a, a pretty well-educated man who was also a very good tennis player. He was playing semi-pro, pro tennis um, in his 20s, and he was also a graduate of one of the top American schools. And he investigated over a period of time the issue of what he calls the inner game. So he wrote the inner game of tennis, inner game of golf, and that, that's the series. But the issue that he was investigating was what he calls interference. So the second bullet, capital P is performance, equals potential, little p, minus interference. Now just think about that for a moment. Performance equals potential. We agree with that, wouldn't we? That if we could make our potential equal our performance, we would be happy as Larry, and we would be doing brilliantly in any field that we're in. But all of us, to some degree or other, have interference. It's the reason why, even though you have the wherewithal to stand and address a golf ball, you are unlikely, unless you are one of the top players in the world, to make that shot repeatable and sustainable every single time you hit it. Reason? there is interference at play, and that's really what he was talking about in regards to sport, whether it was tennis or golf or anything else. We can obstruct ourselves. We can get in the way of being able 
to do our best stuff. How is this relevant to coaching? Well, it's because when you actually talk out your issue, when you are given the sort of space that Mel was talking about earlier on, the safety, the stretch, the person that is with you in terms of encouraging you to do your thinking and ask questions with no judgment, your ability to see what might be getting in your way more clearly so that you can actually manage it and move forward. And I think this is really interesting when you look at sport and you look at sports coaches and you wonder what they do. The coach is the primary supporter in the sense of praising effort. Not praising whether you're good or bad, praising how much you're putting in to knowing what it is that you, as in this case the athlete, the coachee, knows. What's really interesting when you hear coaches talk about their athletes or about their teams, they know absolutely with confidence that these players know. They have everything in their toolkit and experience to actually do their best. All they need is the safety, the space, whether it's in practice, whether it's in talking about it, to get rid of those demons. We call them gremlins. Get rid of that interference so that you are able to do your best thing. That's where the sporting analogy comes from. I want to talk about a man about halfway through their career, and they had done very well, and they were on the verge of going into a board position in their organization. They were very good with their juniors and very good with their peer group, but the seniors were less sure. They were less sure whether this individual was going to be comfortable, as comfortable as he had been in his previous roles when he got into the boardroom. And he was asked by us if we would help him with that transition. So the issue for us was, what is it that you feel you need? What was on going on inside them in terms of their confidence? The things which, in Tim Galway's sense, were interferences for him. And actually, he was able to see those for what they were. And not only did they get into a board role, it was only a matter of weeks before they were being interviewed live on um, Radio 4 and speaking on platforms to large audiences. It was something that was almost like a, a tape that they needed to break through, chest through, and just go on and, and show that the people who had faith in them to be a future board director, they were absolutely right about that. And that's what that person's coaching did for them. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Simon and Melanie. We're into the first of our two Q&As. The first question for you both is about moving up. If you want to move up the career ladder, what would you do with your coach in order to make this happen? I think it depends where you are and where you're going. Very often, the useful techniques in this are to try and establish how you got where you are at the moment, what techniques you used, and to try and work with you on how you could replicate some of those as you move forward. One of the important things is to understand what it is you do well and things you don't do so well and how they manifest themselves because by understanding them you can change the focus on them. So it would be talking through your experience and examples would be one way of doing it. Yeah, let me, let me build on that. So if, if you're in a situation where you're bringing yourself to coaching and you've got a particular issue about moving up, it's quite possible that you would be asked a question like, so what is it that you're thinking about most? Maybe a fear, an anxiety. And then the next question is likely to get into that space that Mel's just described, which are, so in the past, how have you dealt with that? What has really worked for you? So what you're doing is you're, you're using your strengths and your know-how and, if you like, extrapolating that into, well, what might work here? Okay, that's, you know, as your coach, that sounds good. What else? Have you tried that? How, how did it work when you did? What if you were to try something else? If so, what would that be? This is the sort of questions that a coach will ask. You notice they're not pejorative. They're not even leading. They're actually asking you to go into the step into the space to answer your own question because you are the person in control of your life and your professional life. And as we're hinting at here, the resource based on which you're drawing is immense. And one of the great things about coaching is that ability to draw on 
and become more resilient because you're actually drawing on more of you than normally you would do. Thank you. Okay, so should you stick with one coach for life for a fixed duration or should you use various coaches for different reasons? A lot of it depends on what it is you're working on. In answer to the first part of the question, I think it is very, very rare that anybody would need a coach for life because what happens is we go off and we do things, we find we need to work on something and we then decide we'd like to work with somebody. So we go through phases in our lives when coaches are more, more useful than others. It can take a while to build the confidence in being able to explore some different issues. And so certainly, I think if you were going to book a series of, say, four to six coaching sessions, I would then say you'd work with one individual. Whether when you, if, if you made a decision to come back to coaching or you wanted to work on something completely different, then I think you'd find that you would probably go into the marketplace and see what else was out there because we all learn different things from different people. I agree with those points and I also think that we grow differently and at different rates and yes you might decide actually in spite of what you've just heard you might stay with somebody for longer but there's likely to be a point where you genuinely believe that someone else is going to bring something different to you a different angle a different stretch it's very interesting the whole business we'll talk in a minute about matching and the whole sort of chemistry thing between a coach and a coachee it's very interesting to see how people orient to coaches, whether they want somebody who is comfortable for them, a bit like them, similar age, similar gender, similar background in terms of what they've done in life and so on. That really does work well. And yet, in the same conversation, you could easily find somebody 180 degrees away from that, wanting somebody who's a lot older, a lot younger, from a different gender, with a different background, who's going to be quite different, almost grit in the oyster different for them. So I suspect the more you get into coaching, the more you use coaches, the more you'll see what Mel and I are saying here about the need for difference. Interesting question here. Uh, what's a good way to identify and find a coach that has good working knowledge of your industry? All, all coaches will be very open with you about their own background and it's important that they are as transparent as you need them to be about their biography and, and what they've done and where they've worked and indeed for you to quiz them about you know the particular context very easy isn't it to say oh well I worked in this sector and I have this job title it doesn't mean necessarily that they've experienced the sort of things that maybe are important to you so don't hold back you know you're going to have the type of relationship we've been telling you about which is a very personal relationship and a trusted one and you want to make sure that you buy well if you want to go and buy a sweetie for a couple of p that's one thing if you want to buy a you know a piece of high-tech um, equipment that's going to cost you hundreds of thousands you're going to really do your due diligence on it so I think a coach is in the latter category and I guess what I would add is of why is that relevant We've touched a little bit on, and we're going to go on to talk a little bit more about this, but a coach doesn't need to be an expert in your industry and your profession to be helpful in helping you see through a different set of eyes. If you're looking for advice and guidance that actually are pertinent to where you are in your career, then perhaps a mentor is a better choice because then the relevance of somebody having worked in your industry and your discipline is really, really important. The more important thing about a coach is that they have a qualification that they've studied and they've had some practice because they will have then access to techniques to help and be more objective in many ways, I think. Perfect. Yeah, I think we can pick up some more questions towards the end. So let's have a look now at what some of the outcomes might be from coaching. Some of the things we've picked out here are more confident in putting your point across. So often what happens when you go through coaching is you learn a lot more about your strengths and your weaknesses and through that your impact on other people. And so it gives you confidence in being you because you know much more about how you're going to react to things. You're more aware of who you are and how you work. And this helps you anticipate and find alternative routes to get what it is you want to do done and to think about it differently. 
you're able to recognize patterns and notice these patterns in others. And this makes you more resourceful and also more understanding of other people. Oftentimes, we can be very hard on ourselves. We think we're going to be found out. We worry that we're going to get it wrong. But if we can be more forgiving with ourselves, we open up the opportunity to learn and to laugh at ourselves and also to be more compassionate with ourselves and through that be more compassionate with other people too. So often our views of who we are and how we do what we do are colored and sometimes tarnished by our experiences and we're not very objective about ourselves. And what we do when we go on a learning journey with a coach is we start to look through different windows. We start to get a different view. So instead of looking out of the back of our house at the garden, we look out of the front of the house at the view over the park. It gives us a different perspective. Differing views are one of the other benefits. Having someone else reflect your words back to you can be really interesting. It's like having a conversation with a mirror. Don't forget the coach doesn't have an agenda. So they're going to be listening attentively to what you say and able to play it back so you can hear yourself and learn from yourself. It gives you perspective. Taking the time out sometimes to reflect on what we've done creates huge learning for us. And it keeps things in perspective and proportion to what they are. Sometimes we react really strongly to things because they touch and cross our values. And if we can understand that, we can move them around and actually feel less emotional in our reactions towards them and have a solution and an alternative way of dealing with it. So how much to change and charge? This is about an investment. It's almost like a development opportunity for yourself. You can treat yourself, i.e. pay yourself, or you can get your business to pay. And very often you will find that coaches have a different pricing structure depending on who's paying. You can buy coaching for a few sessions to try it. We talked a little bit earlier as in answers to one of the questions about you're not looking at a coach forever. The costs can vary depending on what it is you're looking for, the type of coach you want, and the level of experience you want to buy. It can be tailored to your needs, unlike other training. And that's the important thing, that if you've got a particular issue you want to deal with, you could just go and buy three sessions. Other people do a course. And a course normally, I guess, would be up to about six sessions. But they can vary in length, as we'll tell you a little bit more about. And you can do it through different mediums. It isn't always face-to-face. -face. Sometimes you could do it on Skype, you can do it on the telephone, or sometimes you can even get text or email support as you go through the process. So why might you use coaching? We talked about it being about the future, about tomorrow. So progression isn't just about promotion. It's about moving on from where you are and trying and doing something different. So it can be on the way up but it's taking much longer to get where you want to be. You thought you'd have got promoted by now and you keep getting the same feedback about not being ready or needing to fix something. Again, you could be on the way up, but actually you're starting to lose your confidence. It's taken a while and you're starting to wonder whether you really want to do this and this is really for you. You could be on the way up, but actually you just got the promotion and it's not what you wanted it to be. And very often, doing coaching for the first 90 days in a new role or a new business can be really helpful in having somebody confidential to talk to about your learning because it helps you really understand how much learning is going on and to take stock of that. It may be you do want to change, but you're not sure what it is and where you want to go. So you want to talk it through and brainstorm it and think about it in a different context. Or you could even be stuck but it lets you consider what's getting you stuck and how to unstick it. So it can be used in so many different contexts in terms of being helpful and useful for you. Now you've heard already that you, know, you do have choice about your coach and you do have choice about numbers of sessions and so on. And you can be really flexible about this. And you know, 20 to 30 minutes by phone on Skype can be really helpful to you. 
just as helpful in its own way as having two hours F to F face to face. A lot of people say, oh, well, I don't feel I'm getting value from my coach if I'm not actually physically with them. And they're right, of course they are, if that's the way they feel about it. But we who are trained as coaches know that we can also do terrific work um, virtually. And I think the really important thing is that you think about what is going to work for you. I can think of a corporate client that Mel and I have both been involved in where we have actually agreed with the organization that's paying for our time that we would work with a group of people and what typically we would have this sort of profile in terms of the number of hours and whether it would be face-to-face -face or by phone or whatever. And actually an individual has said, well, this works better for me. Is it okay if I do it this way? And of course, we, we will say yes because it's all about the coachee and what works best for you. Another element of this is to look to see whether the coach that you're working with is supervised. Because coaching is a profession. It is a highly skillful and sophisticated profession at that. And anybody worth their salt as a coach is on their own learning journey. What do we mean by that? Well, we are adhering to standards and to ethics and knowing all the time where the boundaries are for we as coaches and the coaches that we work with. We want to be better at what we do as coaches. We want to be able to reflect better. We want to stay sharp with our skills. We want to make certain that we are learning anything new that we hear about in the coaching arena with regard to approaches to coaching and tools. And sometimes, like Mel, you might find coaches that are pursuing further education, you know, a master's degree in coaching, and in Mel's case, leadership and coaching. And the other thing is that another key element of your coaching process is your contract, contracting, as we call it. And this is all about what is it you're actually trying to do here? What is the journey you are going to be on? What's going to be included in terms of the coaching in terms of the amount of hours and support that you're going to get and how flexible it is and the confidentiality around that you know are you going to be absolutely certain that what you are working on in your coaching space stays in that space those sorts of elements of coaching are very important to you so I'm sure all of us at various times in our working life come across boss trouble and boss trouble can be really quite awkward because our boss is for that moment in time so important, so dominant, sometimes domineering, um, in our working life at that moment. And confidentiality is really important uh, between a coach and their coachee in that particular case. In this particular person I'm thinking of, they had so much in their life that was going well, personally, with their spouse, with their kids, where they lived, the commute to work. Everything was just as they wanted it to be. But their boss was difficult, and the relationship that they had with their boss was difficult, and it was primarily because the boss was a bully in the view of the person that we were coaching. And actually, it came down to a values-based issue, as lots of things do in the coaching arena. It's about things that are going on for you right at the core of you. There are things which are pushing you into a place where you feel uncomfortable. Through the coaching process that they went through, they began, as Mel has been saying to you, to really understand better what was going on for them personally and their core values and also what was going on with their boss and in the relationship between the two of them. And they were able to put together a strategy for how they were planning to deal with that issue how they were going to deal with work generally, their boss specifically, the relationship they had with their board, because they were a board member. And they were able to see a way of building on that platform and from to go from strength to strength, and indeed did so. They didn't need to leave their organization. They were able to action the things that they thought through and have never looked back. Is coaching affordable? Well, you've heard Mel talk a little bit about how much investment there may be and whether you buy it, whether it's bought for you by your organization. I want to give you an example of a new client of ours who decided that they were going to work with us and go through a program and actually decided as part of it to consider offering their husband for their birthday some coaching. 
and so it was given as a present by, in this case, a wife to a husband. That is not the first time we have seen that happen. I think one of the things that's coming up for people on an individual basis, increasingly in the UK, I think the Americans, North Americans are further ahead than we are, where they believe that an investment in this type of process is beginning to get close to being on a par with going to the sun on holiday or just having a break, having a day at a spa, you know, and actually treating yourself in that way because of the potential benefits that it can bring you. And what might those be? Well, interference can get cleared, you know, as we were saying with the, the Tim Galway um, concept. But actually, I think a lot of it is about energy. Energy lies at the root of our ability to impact more positively our life generally and our performance as professionals. And if you feel better because you have been able to take some stuff that was in a state of confusion, sit in that space, work it through, get clear, take action, it's amazing how you feel in terms, it's almost like feeling lighter as you move on in your world. What it's really about is your ability to get control of the things that you really want to have your hands or the levers on, you know, in order that you can make the things work the way that you want them to. Whether that's an issue of time management, an issue of just being completely overloaded at work, an issue of fragmentation in the relationship with individuals at work like your boss. So those are the sorts of benefits. We have seen terrific returns, ROI, returns on investment in corporate contexts where a lot of it has been about um, what could have happened negatively if this wasn't handled positively. You know, that somebody might have cut up rough, that there might have been a parting of the waves with lots of lawyers and a lot of costs, for example. But actually, it's allowed an individual to really see clearly, to be more generous, as Mel was alluding to earlier, more generous with themselves and with other people about what it was that was important for their work and their life. And what about this business of finding the right coach? And we've posed the question, is there ever such a thing as the right coach. As one of the questions that Nisa posed just a few minutes ago, you know, the right coach at what stage? Because if you are moving through and getting into the idea of using coaching um, periodically in your professional life, what is right for you in one moment may not be a year or two later. And maybe you do have to metaphorically kiss a few frogs before you find the, the right one. But what we would say is that if somebody has been recommended to you on the basis of a combination of their professional competence together with them being the sort of person that he or she who recommends to you says, I think you would get on well with them, they're definitely worth looking at. You must meet them. This idea of the chemistry meeting, what we call the matching process between a coach and a coachee is absolutely fundamental. Can we get on? And if for any reason, despite the best judgment that you have made about an individual coach, you find that you don't after a short period of time, stop and move on. Say, look, I don't think this is working for me. You don't have to say they're a bad coach. It's just they're not working. This isn't working for me. Move on. And that's very important for you to uh, feel that you are in control of the whole of this process, including who it is that you work with as a coach. Mel. So what do we need to know about coaching? Well, a lot of the time, the best way to find out about what's happened is to talk to people who've had it and to try and get them to give you some examples of how this works. What do you need to know? Well, you need to know that it's going to be safe. You need to know that it's about you and to go back over some of the areas we've already talked about it's a good way to learn more about you it's a confidential conversation and it's your agenda and you can explore and learn about your own motivations the most important thing you need to know about coaching is you need to have some fun with it you need to be curious and learn about yourself we referenced this a little bit earlier on but mentors are experts and coaches are not Coaches are expert at what they do, but they have a very different skill set. They have techniques and processes, they have heightened listening skills to help you work to your agenda. 
when you go to work with a mentor, you're looking f to use their experience. You're looking for them to steer you and give you guidance on how they approached a certain situation and a problem so that you can actually think about whether that might be relevant for you. But that doesn't happen with coaching. Sometimes you will find that a coach does have experience and there may be the opportunity for you to ask them and they might be willing to share it. But that would be the exception and not the rule in a coaching session, which is not the case with mentors. Coaching is about facilitating a conversation with yourself, working with somebody else to help you do this. It's all about you. It's in a safe environment. It helps you understand more about what makes you tick and how to use that awareness in your day-to-day -day relationships with other people, your work, and your choices in your life. It can help you take problems you've had over and over again and tip them on their head and think about them in a different way. It can help you recognize patterns of behavior and look for other ways about how you might feel about something and other things you might do. And all in all, it's going to make you a lot more resourceful in understanding alternative ways to be you that make it much more fun and much more enjoyable. Okay, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, we're now on to the final Q&A, so pop your questions over if you haven't already. We have an individual here wanting to know more about position ignition coaching, and so can either of you say more about why people come to position ignition for coaching and how that all works? We are a careers advisory and publishing business, and we specialize in how individuals are, if you like, plying their trade and uh, how they're surviving and thriving in their professional careers and in their workplace environments. That's what we do. We run lots of different ways of supporting people from publishing materials to providing one-on-one -on -one support. And in the one-on-one -on -one support that we give, we use coaching techniques in the way that you've heard described. It's part of our toolkit. Most, not all, but the vast majority of the people who work within Position Ignition are trained and qualified coaches. So we use that technique and we take it very seriously for the reasons that you will have heard. And we also sometimes work in what I would describe as a pure coaching environment. So because we are known by other players in the market and they may be nowhere near the careers specialist area of ours, but maybe their consultancies, they recognize that we have an associate group, a community of very diverse, highly skilled professional people who are qualified coaches and they use us as their faculty to utilize uh, the coaching um, prowess that we have. Great, I just want, can you say a bit more about how the one-to-one -one coaching support would work? What we do is try and understand where the individual is and what their motivations are at the moment and what's changed so that we can start to understand what needs to happen to make the move and also what the individual's looking for and why they're looking for that. So that would give us a background to start to actually put some ingredients together to help that individual on their journey. We have a process that somebody can follow which basically starts with what is it that they've got in terms of the uh, assets. We all, at whatever stage we are in our, in our life and in our working career, we have accumulated skills and experience and lots of learning and lots of wisdom and so on and it's really important to get underneath that and understand it. So that's a start point for us. Second thing is and where could you take that? What are the options that you have for where you may go into the future? And we support through that process, both of opening up and generating those options, as well as being practical about the things that an individual has to deal with in their life at the moment and in the foreseeable future, which could relate to the amount they earn or where they live and familial type issues. And then when they get to the point where they go through that process, the crystal clear thing is to get really clear about what it is they're then going to market to do uh, into the future. And we support them post to that point. So they put together a smart plan and then we support them in what we call the go-to-market phase. Now, there is a process, but underlying that 
is our belief, as you've heard now let me tell you, that for the most part the individual, one, knows themselves best, and two, given the right sort of support and self-confidence, are able to go on that journey alone. But we guide them, that's the term we use as, with career guides and coaches, we guide them through that process. Okay, thank you very, very much, both of you. So one final question. Where do you see the coaching industry heading? Do you think that the way coaches interact with people and organizations will change over time, or do you think it will just stay as it is? I think it's a profession that is growing and is going to become more of a profession rather than less of it. So I think that industry in general and purchasers of coaching are asking more and more of the coaches they're working with. So coaches need to be on a continual learning journey and growing their professional repertoire of knowing how to deal with situations and to help individuals. It is a very good and clever way for business to actually use its money wisely by targeting an, an amount of money against an individual that gets to work on the specifics that they and the business have agreed, or in a personal sense, it gets to the point very quickly. I would say that the world of organizational work is more complex than it's ever been, and I predict that it will not get less complex. If you just look at globalization, geopolitics, digital technology, to name three, things which are likely to make it tough and you look around at what organizations many organizations are trying to manage it is really really tough and people need more support and I believe that coaching is relatively new is going to be more in the mainstream is going to be bigger as a profession and it's really important that people who use it use good people so I think we're going to see it more and more I think in terms of processes regarding individuals in the workplace we're going to see more of it it would not surprise me that coaches are picking up for example, apprentices and new graduates in organizations to support them through not just the adjustment from school or university, but into how do you make sure that you can navigate and survive and do well in organizations. Why do I think that? Because we've been hearing for years that there's not enough talent. We've been hearing now recently, more recently, that organizations are squealing because they can't retain their people and particularly their good people. In fact, I'm speaking at a conference next week on the whole issue of how do you keep people in your organization. And I think it comes down to these things. Give people the chance to have a bit of oxygen. Walk into a safe place where they can unload and really then think about the things that are important to them. And all of those signals to me, whether they're micro or macro, point towards coaching becoming a more significant contributor to the way organizations work and how individuals live. Thank you very much for being with us. If you wish to make contact with us, you can get in touch with us by email, follow us on Twitter, and if you're minded, there is a huge amount of resource at positionignition.com in our blog and on our website. And finally, if you are minded to listen to some of our past webinars, we have done quite a few of these over the last four or five years, and we would be delighted if you went to the careerignitionclub.com webinars on de demand and downloaded some. And if you wish to look at the Career Ignition Club, there's um, a host of materials there that can help you with your career thinking. So once again, thank you very much for being with us, and we hope very much we'll see you again.